That was a bit of a shame she failed. You'd have probably yeah. have passed if it was a motorbike if it was test, a motorbike, wouldn't you? Maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe, I think definitely, really. Right. Okay. Um, now, Todd is going to be taking your calls later, so get those calls in on 081 811 8181. But for the now, I just want you to kind of sit back, relax, yeah. get prepared for those calls, okay. and listen with me to this uh, new video from Renaissance, M People it is, and Renaissance, and listen very carefully because at the end, they're going to tell you about a fabulous competition. I just thought I'd better put you in the picture. We have decided to sell the store. Great. There's a buck, right? Yeah. We've had a better offer. What? How much? I can't say. Yes, you can. Shelley, please, do you mind? Come on here, how much better? Ten and a half. We will match it. Shelley! And offer another 250 on top of that. Yeah, hang on a minute. Look, this ain't a game of poker, you know. Yeah, we should have discussed this in private, Mark. Who offered you ten and a half? Shelley, oh, please, I'm not give it a rest. Anything with you, it's between me and him. Who offered you ten and a half? Well, Shelley, let the man speak. Go Just on. Tell me how things stand, all right? Me and David have discussed it, and we're ready to sell the site as a going concern for ten and a half. Well, you do what you have to do, Ian. You always do. Fair enough. Don't start. You've done it, haven't you? You've gone and sold Richard Cole the store. Yeah, be all his as of Monday. I know he's not exactly a family friend, but he offered the best price. I don't mean daft to turn it down. I mean, we've got the kids to think of, haven't we? But what about Mark? Mark understands. Well, I don't, Ian. Look, I know how important your dad was to you, and that's why giving a part of him to Richard Cole just seems so wrong. Look, I know I've never said it before, but that's how I feel. I'm sorry, Ian, but you said yourself that that picture was more important to him than his flat or anything. Yeah, I know, love, It was but... an extension of him. The whole family. I used to laugh at them, but I can see it now. Can't you? I really feel like I'm sitting in Albert Square with the two of you having a little bit of a gossip. Welcome to Michelle and Todd. Do you feel like you're in EastEnders here now? Yes, yeah, very realistic, isn't it? Do you yeah. think... Mm, yeah. Very. <laughs> is it too realistic, do you think? Uh, it's a bit brighter here than it is in the square, and it always seems to rain in the square, doesn't it? Yeah, it's quite it sort of summary with the flowers. Yeah. Well, I'm a bit wet, actually, flowers. from my last... <laughs> from your diving over there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Live and Kicking. We did this specially Thank for you because we wanted you to feel very at home. And we've got lots of questions for you, which we're going to get straight on. Patrick, what's your question? Now that Rowley said, are EastEnders going to have any more new pets? Oh, I don't know. Um, well, Nelly's got a cat, hasn't she? She's got a cat. She's got a, a little furry cat. And, I can't um, remember his name. Um, um, they're casting, actually, for the moment, aren't they? Are they? Yeah, <laughs> I think they're casting for yeah. animals, so has Tor anyone had animals out there? Tortoises and elephants, <laughs> in particular. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that would be a good addition to the square, would, wouldn't, wouldn't it? it? would <laughs> yeah. be an interesting addition. I'm yeah. not sure whether it would be great. But, I'm but sure there won't be another dog, you don't think, like Rolly? I think there probably will be, because everyone loved well, Rolly and Wee, didn't they? they? Oh, there's the Greyhound. Mm. There's a Nigel's Greyhound, which we've forgotten about. What's her name? Frida. Frida, that's it. Yeah, you forgot about that, didn't you? So there is one. And the cat. Right, well, let's go straight to the phones. Let's see who's on line one. Hello, line one. Oh, I think, let's, let's try you. Are you there, line one, Rabina? No, she's not there. Let's try another line. Line three. Hello, line three. Who's there? Hello, this is Bruce Davis from Christchurch in Dorset. Hi, Bruce. Uh, You're uh, through. What's your question? I just wanted to ask Todd and Michelle, if they could uh, write an episode of EastEnders, mm. uh, what kind of storyline would you have? Mm. Mm, golly. Want to kick off? Um... I think I might have a really sort of happy storyline, maybe a happy episode where where I get to laugh a bit, and yes. where I get to sort of, you see, happy. Um, yes. Just because sort of, the people do complain that it is a bit sort of, we, we're always so miserable all the time, so perhaps... It's, you have a lot of problems, don't you? We do, yes, and, problems. you know, but uh, maybe a bit where people are a bit sort of jollier, or maybe where we all go away on a coach trip somewhere. Or maybe as well where you'd have like loads of money to go and spend on really great clothes and things like that as well. Or well, we think? go up west. Yes. Mm. Something like up that. West, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Todd? Um, a nice trip to the West Indies would be nice. I think Mark should go to the West Indies, really. Yeah, oh, been to Amsterdam. Yeah, I know, I know, but he's doing well on his. He's, got, he's just got his store. And what you justification know? would there be for that? Do you I think? don't know. Got to see the cricket. You know, get a nice town. Hmm. It might be an exciting <laughs> episode, might yes, it? Yes, indeed. Does that answer your question, Bruce? No. Uh, uh, that's the kind of storyline I'll have as well. Is it? Oh, good. Go. Thanks very much for your call. Bye. Right, let's take a question from Indy. This is to Todd. Have you ever met anybody with HIV virus? Yeah, I have. I, I you know, uh, playing the HIV character, obviously, you do um, as much research, you know, as you can. Yeah. And um, the uh, Terence Higgins people, of course, you know, met people through that as well. But funny enough, not just through, you know, sort of controlled... Uh, environments. I've been at football matches where people have come up and mm -hmm. they've gone away from the crowd and said, excuse me, you know, I enjoy what the program's doing and, you know, things like that. So sometimes a situation where it totally surprises you or where you actually don't think that it's in a singer. And you probably have learned a lot from it, have you? Sort of yeah. feel that you've really kind of been enlightened by it. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think we all have a, a certain awareness of HIV and AIDS and uh, mm. things, but I think yeah, drama's a good way of getting 
you know, that sort of message across and yeah, I've definitely learned from that. Great stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's go back on the phones. Hello, line one. I'd like to ask uh, Michelle yeah. that when you first find, found out that you were going to have twins, how did you react? <laughs> oh my God, not no more babies. <laughs> <laughs> no, because everything I do, I seem to, they all seem to make me pregnant for some reason. I don't know. I must bring out the maternal instinct in direct. And what did you producers. wear when you were very pregnant? Like, no, all I thought was, oh no, not that lump again. But they're a bit more advanced these days. And I used to get fitted sort of every couple of months. And, and the costume lady was pregnant as well. So we did it so that it was sort of, you know, it was quite accurate. But it was, um, it was, pretty, it was pretty heavy. Twins are sort of pretty heavy going, I can tell you. Yeah. And we, I was sort of weighed down with lots of sort of sort of almost like concrete stuff in the end, so I used to waddle a lot. You used to waddle a lot. Did you have lots of sort of, it was padding and things, was it? Oh, huge padding. So did you feel quite pregnant? As well. I did. In I felt like people just sort of, um, used to ignore me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What, not give up my belly. That's give... of other people, like Tom there, when you sort of go, you know, like that. that. Of course nice. they wouldn't if I really was pregnant. It was an no. innocent tickle. Thinking <laughs> I was they right. would have given you, innocent. you'd have given her the, the seat on the bus, wouldn't you? Yes, <laughs> yeah. of course. Good. Of course. OK, thanks for your call, Rabina. Let's take a question from Emma. Another Emma. Do you um, ever eat in the cafe in real life, and what's the food like? Ooh, good question. Yeah, mm. Mm. The funny thing about it is, um, you know, they've, they've filmed out of sequence sometimes, so uh, we might do a cafe scene at sort of two in the afternoon yeah, or, or something cake like and, that. And, yeah, and so it's not there for continuity in the afternoon. It's, it's odd eating time, but... Cafe's a good cook, though, Cafe's isn't a great cook. <laughs> Is she? Well, and is, is it a working cafe? I mean, oh, it definitely no, it's a working secret? cafe. I mean, we oh, always, work, yeah. the prop guys, especially uh, Brian, are always, there's yeah. always hot toast on the go all the yeah. time. So in between takes, we're always eating hot toast and we're always having cups of tea mm. and we sort of help ourselves in yeah, between. Nice. So it is, no, it is, it's, real food, it's isn't edible. It? Mm. Ooh, it's that food. sounds good. The crew are laughing because there's a lot of food from EastEnders here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, perhaps they don't agree. <laughs> they eat it all. I bet they do. That sounds good, doesn't it? Maybe we should drop by there one day. Let's go back to the phones. Hello, line two, who's there? Martin from Southampton. Hi Martin, you're um, through? Ask, the question I want to ask both of you is which members of the cast do you get on with most? Oh. Oh. Um. <clears throat> well, shall I use the line that's one You love big everybody. Happy, I love everybody, that's mm. one big happy family. <laughs> yeah, I get on with most people. I find, um, I don't know, I find I do get on with people. Um, I don't know. Do you? You're yeah. hardly going to tell it. You're hardly going to tell it to you, you speak. Speak. Besides you, I can't stand <laughs> you. Yeah. Nobody, well, no one likes my character, but I hope they like me as a person. Here, we put you on the top spot now, Todd. Yeah, oh, is it still me? Yeah. Uh, well, we're talking about Michelle here. You get Michelle. on well with her. Oh, she's wonderful. But we never have any scenes she's together. This is the first time we've ever met, isn't it? It is, it is really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only time we had a bubble. scene together was when he said, hello, Cindy, and I just ignored him and walked past. That's right. <laughs> so maybe so that's hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Todd, this is Cindy. Yeah. You know, just hello, like to introduce you both and sitting here. But no, everyone's wonderful, honestly. And if you believe that, you believe anything. Well, you were hardly going to tell us that you didn't get on, did you, really? <laughs> Thanks very much for no, your call, do, Martin. Bye-bye. Well, thank you both very much. Oh, well, we had you. loads more questions. We've got to stop for the minute. We'll look forward to seeing you three times a week. Cool, yeah, indeed. It's yes. excellent. We look forward to keep seeing you there. And just stay here all morning, if you like, and just feel much happier, you know.